I don't know if anyone else gets personally victimized by ads, but these two for at home food sensitivity tests have been following me around. So naturally I had to dive a little deeper and look into this Everly Well at home food sensitivity test. It says specifically that this test is not a food allergy test, nor can it determine lactose intolerance or celiac disease. Instead, it measures IgG antibody reactivity. And since it's been a hot minute since I'm taking a biology class, I had to look it up. While the information online was helpful, I figured I would get a little bit more detail from some experts. One of my favorite YouTube channels, Dr. Mike, and his guests, Dr. Stukas. Food sensitivity tests. Mm -hmm. Oh man, food sensitivity tests. These are the tests or treatments to avoid. Number one on the list from the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology is don't perform IgG testing because IgG, which is what these food sensitivity tests measure, is not a test of sensitivity or allergy or intolerance. It's a memory antibody. We exposure. talked about that. Exposure, yeah. right. I have absolutely no idea if this is a scam or not. I did just see tons and tons of ads for it all over my Facebook and my Instagram and it was just driving me crazy and I was like, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will check my food sensitivity at home. I want to know. I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. This video is in no way sponsored. This was not sent to me. I am not working with Everly Well. I was just very intrigued by it. I purchased this with my own money and I'm doing this little experiment for you guys. Well, and for me, but also for you guys. So I ended up paying $130 for this test kit. Yes, $130. They were running some kind of special and they had like a discount code. So I was like, oh, perfect, why not? I have a second camera going over here because apparently I'm that YouTuber now. I've got the dual angle thing going on. It says that it tests 96 foods for immunoglobulin antibody reactivity. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It says like wash your hands, all that stuff. I already did that. And then it wants you to just like shake out your hand to kind of loosen the blood i don't know so this is the little collection card that it comes with and then you're going to put the spots of blood right there all right here goes nothing i'm kind of nervous i can't lie take my little alcohol pad i'm gonna use that to clean off my finger oh my gosh i'm so nervous i'm fine when like i get my blood taken otherwise but like doing it yourself is kind of nerve-wracking oh my god i'm so nervous ah! okay one two three Oh, that wasn't bad. So now the goal is to let the blood drip onto the paper. I feel like I'm not getting enough blood. It literally wants me to like fill up the entire circle with my blood and I'm like struggling to get, I might have to prick my finger again, we'll see. This is a good one. Okay, now it's starting to drip. This is so weird. Okay, I think that's good, and now it's time to clean off my bloody finger. <laughs> All of this just to see if I have food sensitivities. If someone wanted to clone me, they could. That's all I have for now. I'll see you guys again when I get my food sensitivity results back. It's been about two weeks and my food sensitivity test results are back. I was very eager to check the results and now that they're here, I can share them with you guys and I can also look at them myself for the first time. So let's get started. All right, so it says that my, can you click view my results? I'm so nervous, why am I nervous? Okay, it's gonna be like everything I love. It's gonna be like, you're sensitive to it. Stop eating it. Hi, Kayla. Your food sensitivity test is complete. Ooh. Okay. Your test showed an IgG reactivity above normal to six foods. Foods in the high, moderate, or mild reactivity ranges are good candidates for an elimination diet to help identify your food sensitivities. I have nothing in my high reactivity to foods, which I guess is good. Again, if this is legitimate, I guess that's a good thing. There, There is not a specific food that I am like highly sensitive or highly reactive to, so I guess that's good. It says all clear here, just stick to foods within your other reactivity levels if you decide to do an elimination diet. So moderate reactivity, just one food? What the heck? One, okay, so it says I am moderately sensitive or moderate reactivity to egg whites. I mean, I eat eggs pretty frequently, but that's interesting that it's like egg white sensitive. That's where all the protein's at, bro. All the protein, bro. Okay, so that was my only moderate. That's kind of like 
anticlimactic, but whatever. So moving down the list, we next have mild reactivity foods. So mild reactivity foods are class one foods in your lab results, create a smaller immune reaction, but they can be sneaky symptom causers. So I have five. <laughs> egg yolk is number one. Yolk, do I say yolk weird? Egg yolk, egg yolk, egg yolk. Is it Y-O-K-E or Y-O-L-K? How do you pronounce egg yolk? Comment down below or don't, I don't care. I mean, am I really sensitive to eggs? I've been eating them for like ever. I feel like out of all the foods I consume, I have the least like symptoms after I eat eggs. I don't know. Moving right along. Okay, wait, I have, so after egg yolk comes lobster. What? I don't eat lobster. I eat lobster maybe one time a year. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I believe this so far. The next one is pineapple. I don't eat it all that often. I mean, I, I know that this test is not like showing me foods I eat often and I am sensitive to. It is literally just telling me my reactivity level to certain foods. So just because these aren't foods I eat often, that's not what this test is is telling me, just as a FYI. Okay, rye is number four. I'm a little bit more sensitive to rye than um, pineapple, I guess. I mean, that makes sense. It's a type of grain, and I already know that I'm relatively, like, grain sensitive. And it says it can be, it's commonly referred to as a type of gluten, but it contains less gluten than wheat. So that's interesting. All right. And my last mild reactivity food is wheat. Um, that one makes the most sense. Again, if this is legitimate. I've said that like 25 times, and now I'm saying 26. So it's, I'm almost in the moderate reactivity range for wheat. I would agree with that, honestly. That one to me, again, makes the most sense because I know that I am sensitive to those foods. Like I notice I bloat really easily if I eat like tons of wheat products. Like I feel like my skin gets a little bit worse when I eat a lot of wheat products. So that one I'll agree with. The others, I don't really agree. Not that I disagree, but I just am like, okay, like I, I don't really eat lobster, pineapple, or rice. I'm like, I really don't know if I'm sensitive to those things, but I can confirm like things that have wheat in them. I can confirm that. What? Your results were normal for the rest of the foods in the test. This is so anticlimactic. I was ready for it to roast me and tell me all of my favorite foods I'm sensitive to them. No need to do anything differently, but if you're curious, you can see them all here. I am curious. So it has all of the foods here on the left side. All right, let's just, let's just go through them really quick. Almonds, okay. Oh, I'm like the least sensitive to an apple. Interesting. Avocados, I eat those all the time. Baker's yeast, hmm, very low on yeast. Yeast, such a weird word. Bananas five banana okay <laughs> hidden sources banana bread i don't think that's really hidden it's in the name but okay beef low bell pepper bell pepper kind of high in the normal range interesting i eat peppers all the time this is so interesting are there any more oh there we go i was like are there any more black pepper oh very low which is good I put pepper on everything. See, I was expecting like all these foods that I keep saying, I eat them all the time to be like high reactivity and then I would cry because I would have a sensitivity to them, but things are looking up for me, honestly. I was really expecting to be disappointed, but things are looking up, you guys. Broccoli, oh, I love broccoli. Broccoli is like my favorite vegetable and I will not take broccoli slander. Just because you think it smells bad does not make it a not good tasting vegetable. Grow up, eat your broccoli, it's good. And it's very underrated. I, I don't like broccoli slander. It is a great vegetable. What? Brown rice is a zero? I think I'm more gluten sensitive than anything. I mean, we know rice doesn't actually have gluten, but it is higher and I mean, it is nothing but carbohydrates. So it's interesting because I have definitely been living the last few years relatively low carb and it works very well for me. I know it's not for everybody. That's fine. But this is really interesting, the brown rice, again, if this, this test, test is legitimate, legitimate. I've said that ugh, so many times, but you know what I mean. Chicken, <gasps> chicken is a six for me. My beef was lower than chicken. Interesting. Still, I'm in the normal range for all these foods I'm going through. So I don't, cinnamon, what? Cinnamon? No way. 
It has me right at, at normal and mild, like right on the brim. That is so interesting. <gasps> wow, I love cinnamon. How is it? It's known for its anti-inflammatory properties and yet I'm sensitive to it or I have a almost mild reactivity to it. Sounds fake, but I'm not a scientist, so. Okay, I'm about to click coffee, I'm scared. Okay, a four. It's measuring the body's IgG antibody response to the coffee bean, not the caffeine. Fair enough. Gluten. Yeah, gluten, I'm a 10. See, that one makes more sense. But it's so interesting. I really, I was really waiting for gluten to be like moderate or high, but it's, you know, it's higher for the normal range. We'll put it that way. Mozzarella, <gasps> not mozzarella being a seven. Yeah, see, it's funny whenever there are certain foods that are higher, I'm like, see, this thing is accurate. It's 100% right. And then when I have other foods that are like not where I thought they'd be, I'm like, this thing isn't legitimate. Tuna, low. Turkey, five. Watermelon sugar, low. Well, folks, that's it. Um, Was this anticlimactic? Yes. Was this educational? Potentially? Here's the thing, I don't wanna discourage anybody from buying this product or trying a food sensitivity test or anything like that. I think if you are interested in seeing if you have a reactivity to certain foods or you have a food sensitivity, go for it. I mean, yes, the test was a little bit pricey. However, you might actually learn something about yourself. Maybe this is 100% legitimate. Maybe this is like really accurate and I really just don't have that many food sensitivities. Who knows? I think if you are genuinely worried about yourself or the food that you're eating or you're genuinely curious or you're having like extreme symptoms after you eat certain foods, maybe you should go to a doctor or go to an allergist or someone that specializes in things of that nature and they can really help kind of figure out what's going on. I don't think if you have a legitimate problem or a concern that an at home finger prick blood test is going to be the answer. As always, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. It means so much to me. Comment down below and let me know if you are interested in trying an Everly Well home sensitivity food test. Have you done it before? Have you gone to an allergist? Are you sensitive to foods? Let's have a conversation. Let me know, I'm curious. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.